Entonces, Evelyn, vamos a iniciar en unos minutos. Vamos a esperar unos minutos para que los compañeros se puedan conectar. Teacher, only I can, when I want to say you uh, that I'm cooking dinner, so um, I can't uh, have in the camera on okay, for no a problem. few minutes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hey everybody, hello, welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. And as usual, first thing that we'll do is to check about the platform. So this is the class of tonight, the uh, class number four. And uh, you will find here also the question for you to participate. And you need to do also the homework number four. So I'll complete the statements using should or should not. So it's just that. Only five questions, then submit. And, and that's it, okay? So we're going to check the attendance as usual. Abel Edenilson Salazar Melara. Abigail Elizabeth Flores Hernandez. Present. Good. Carlos Humberto Estrada Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Eria Janira Canizales Blanco. Present teacher. Good. Francisco Ernesto Acuña Rivera. Gabriel Esaú Melara Rosales. Isela Beatriz Hernández Morales. Joana Saraí Maldonado González. 
Carla Daniela Molina Cruz. Present teacher. Good. Carla Ivania Anaya Ancheta. Carla Lorena Mendoza Guevara. I'm here. Good. Kevin Ramiro Vázquez Pineda. Laura Guadalupe Fuentes de Meléndez. Present teacher. Ah, okay. okay. Marilyn Alejandra Grande Pérez. Present. Ok. Mario Ernesto Ramírez López. Present. Good. Mirna Janet Ángel de Castro. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Emilio González Cruz. Present teacher. Santos Cristina Cerritos de Ruiz. Present teacher. Good. Saúl Adalberto Cornejo Valdés. Jocelyn Stephanie present, Roldán. Present. Okay. Jocelyn Stephanie Roldán Castaneda. Okay, very good. So we are going to start with the class. Today is Thursday, tomorrow is Friday. So we almost finished the first week. Imagínense, casi terminamos la primera semana ya. Okay, we are going to start with a little video, okay? Uh, este es un poquito largo, hay que ver qué... qué yeah. Perdón. Ah, okay. Okay. So, hay que ver qué entendemos del video y luego lo comentamos. Ese sería el objetivo. Ok. So, here we go. I'm going to show you that right now. Hi, folks. Welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. This video is for the Concord Kids. They're a group of students that are focused on the STEM curriculum, and their advisor shot me an email and said some of the stuff that they're working on, it would be really helpful if they had a video that would show them some of the basics of what a milling machine does. And this really struck a nerve with me, because coincidentally, I was just talking to a local Ohio area um, overview, he's, a, he's a responsible for all of the trades curriculums, and they have a huge interest in the welding program, they can't get kids interested in machining, which baffles me. And I think part of it is because welding is big in central Ohio with a lot of the oil and gas. And people think if they're a welders, they get to drive big trucks and get muddy and go to job sites. And hey, that's, that's cool to people. I totally get it. But, but to think that they're choosing that because they don't even know what machining is, like they have no idea. And hey, I was there once too. I didn't grow up... Uh, my grandfather's a steel fabricator. I didn't grow up uh, with bridge ports and, and milling machines and so forth, so I get it. So I would love to make this little video and show people what metal cutting and machining is. What I want to do today, two really basic things. We're going to show some test cuts on a piece of aluminum with a bridge port milling machine. This mill is probably 50 years old, but it runs great. And then what we'll do is we'll move over and we'll take similar type of cuts on the Tormach CNC machine, which is a computerized version of basically the same thing. This is our Bridgeport milling machine. It's kind of like a drill press, but a lot more. It's similar to a drill press in that we've got a handle that raises and lowers a tool in the quill. But if you'll notice, this quill is really fat and it's actually really strong compared to a benchtop type drill press. But what makes the machine really different from say just a drill press is we've got these handles and I can rotate these handles and move the table left to right or the x-axis and then I can use the handle in the front here and move the table back and forth or front to back in the y-axis so not only can we cut down like you do with a drill bit but we can use an end mill just like that's in here right now and cut on the side of a piece of solid metal just like that there's a ton more that this machine can actually do, but that's really the essence of what, what uh, we need it to do, and that's what we're going to take a look at today. So not only does the machine have to be really strong and really rigid, but to be useful, it's got to be accurate. Accuracy is just key in metalworking and machining. And for this machine, which remember, it's like 50 years old, we can still do that. The key 
are the graduated dials on the handles. We can use these dials to accurately machine and measure distances in one thousandth of an inc increment measurements. And if that doesn't sound precise to you, a thousandth of an inch, that's crazy. A sheet of printer paper is four thousandths of an inch. Let's take a look at that accuracy. Our dial here is on zero. We'll go ahead and rotate it. I'll do it slowly for the camera to 20 thousandths. So that's about five sheets of paper that we should be moving the machine in. Enough talking, let's see this thing in action. Safety glasses on, folks. What we'll do is we'll slide the fork piece under our end mill. We're going to use a two flute, pretty large diameter end mill. And we'll just go ahead and move the quill down so right on top of the work piece. That locks the quill in place. I'll come off the work piece and I can actually lift the table up just a hair. We'll turn her on. And let's see if we can face off the top of this part. So nice and easy, we'll come over. And you should see we're making a nice chip. Machine doesn't sound too loud. And because this work piece is at a little bit of an angle, we'll probably run out, as you see right there. So OK, we'll come back. And we'll just keep cleaning it up. You can go a little faster if you want. Again, folks, we're cutting through metal right now. I think it's pretty cool. You want to try to be smooth with your motion. That'll make for a better cut. Come back right over here. Looks like that's all we'll get removed at this height, if you will. We'll stop the machine. And if you feel that, it is silky smooth. And that's what's really cool. It's a really nice quality cut. So that was cool. We sort of cut the top of it. Let's see if we can do a little bit of a heavier cut. And let's actually see if we can measure the accuracy. So we're going to unlock the quill, lower the tool down. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of a cut off this one side. Then we'll use our, our dials and our digital readout to measure how far over we cut. And let's see if we measure the part that we end up with and see if we were accurate. So here we go. Fire up. Pretty cool. You can see the chips flying off that machine. Should be a nice surface finish. It sounds good. You don't hear chatter. Real nice cut. Nice and steady. Take a look at that. Beautiful. I like that. Let's take a side cut now and see if we can clean up the side of this part and then move over. We'll measure how far we move and we'll see if that distance makes sense and is accurate. This is a two flute quarter inch end mill. Let's fire up. Nice and smooth. Look at that, great surface finish. Very happy with that. Now, we'll come back, and we cut that at zero on our dial. So let's move all the way over. And if we cut it at two, We'll see if that makes sense. Now that's a little bit too much for me to take in one pass. So we'll lift up the quill and we'll take a little bit of a shower pass at first and we'll do a few more deeper. Nice and easy. Come down a little more. You could also come up with the knee. Either way works.
So let's use our digital calipers, which is sort of like a tape measure, but pretty accurate. And let's see what we got. I'm gonna fit them in here. We're at, we're at 1.75 inches. So let's think here, does that make sense? Well, at first you would think, no, I thought we went from zero to two inches. But if you think about it, when we were cutting on the left side, we were at zero, but remember, we're using a quarter inch end mill. So zero is the center line or the middle of the tool. So it was cutting one eighth of an inch or 0 0.125 off on the left. Then we, we moved over to the right, we cut another quarter, eighth of an inch or 0.125. So in the end, we've removed 0.25. So we went from zero to two, but we back out that tool diameter, 1.75 folks, pretty cool, huh? Here is a CNC milling machine. And believe it or not, it's actually incredibly similar to the bridge port we just used. The difference is that instead of using a hand and cranking those knobs, we've got motors and they're driven by computers which take G-code that we sort of program in and it's those computer, computerized motors that move the machine back and forth, which is really cool because you can end up with a very easy way to automate the cutting as well as create complex cuts. And if you want to watch a really good video, in my opinion, on a basic way to build and understand I just did one where I used an Arduino and a very inexpensive shield called a garble shield and we built from nothing a uh, pen plotter that we used to use a pen and create a pattern. It's pretty cool stuff folks and it's really not expensive to get into. So this machine again, it's just like the bridge port. Underneath here we've got screws and motors and that drive the table back and forth and we can use the computer keyboard. We can go left, we can go right, we can go backward and away from us, and we can go down, and we can come back up. Now that was me controlling it myself. I've got a little program in here, and what it's going to do is it's going to trim this block, sort of like what the bridge port did, and we'll measure it afterwards and see what it looks like. And then it's also going to create a circular pattern in the middle. And that's something that would be a lot harder to do if you didn't have a machine that could con calculate and control the steppers with such precision. Okay, so the spindle starts up, it approaches the side of the part here, you'll hear the coolant kick on, those two gray lines have coolant, and you notice when it didn't just jab itself into the part, there's a nice smooth ramp in. Coming along, you can see the chips flying off, looks really nice. And the reason that end mill is coated is it's a special coating, different coatings for different materials that help improve the cut quality or tool life, lots of really cool things like that. Again though, it's all being driven by the computer here and the motors that you see under that are underneath this machine should be pretty darn accurate. The proof will be in the pudding. We'll have to measure it here when it's done. Just about coming down home stretch. And if you watch closely, again, it's gonna ramp out. We'll take a nice little curve right about now, which hopefully will mean there's no tool mark where the part uh, started and finished. Now we're gonna cut a circle, and instead of plunging straight down into it, you'll notice it did a little, it's called an interpolation, but think of it like a, uh, a, like a curly Q type of slide, and that really reduces the chip load, or it's a lot easier on the machine and the tool, nice and easy going into the part like that. And if you think about it, it's cutting a circle like this is using, using both uh, the X and the Y axis at the same time, and that's what's let us cut a perfect circle like this, which again is something that would be a lot harder to do on the bridge port, but is quite easy on a CNC. There we have it. Let's grab our calipers, and let's see if we really got what we hope here. Look at that, folks. 2.249, we're about one thousandth under. So across that whole distance, we're less than one quarter the thickness of a piece of paper off. I'll take that any day, folks. I hope everybody enjoyed that really brief episode of NYC CNC and sort of basics on both manual and how a CNC machine works. 
For those of you regular subscribers, I know this was really basic, but I'm really hoping to help and encourage anyone involved with STEM or any sort of youth engineering and science and technology. It really is so cool. I would encourage you to reach out to either your local STEM program or FIRST Robotics or anything you can do because uh, I tell you, the world needs more engineers and scientists and, and metal workers and stuff like that. To the Concord kids, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you learn and understand the types of equipment out there. A lot of it isn't expensive anymore. That's what's really cool. I did a video about buying this Bridgeport, which I bought for less than $2,000. I know that sounds like a lot, but it also produces money. It's not a huge investment. Some really cool opportunities out there. I certainly love being a machinist and being able what I being able to do what I love in this career and field. And the more we can help people understand and see what's out there and enable them, the better off we are. So thanks for watching. I'll see you this Wednesday for the Wednesday widget. Otherwise, take care. See you soon. Thanks, folks. Okay. Bien clarito, ¿verdad? Todo bien explicado. Aha. What did you understand? What did you get from this? ¿Qué entendimos? Very good. He was like showing the way the machines work. Okay. And they, well, he was using two different machines, right? So very nice, very accurate. What else? What else did you get? Comparatively, one CNC manual and one CNC automatic. Very good, perfect. That was also true. That so it was using that kind of machines and uh, the, you know, it was very accurate because he was able to calculate how many inches he, sa he was saying that, for example, he's able to to cut the size of or the uh, the width of six pages of paper. I mean, that is very accurate, very nice, right? Very good. What else did you get? Uh, he was comparing uh, both both machines. For example, the Bridgeport mining machine was uh, 70 years old. Necesitaba más trabajo. The another one, the CNC, uh, it's quite easy because it, it has a company keyboard and, and can... Uh, help you. O sea, no tiene que ir uno calculando poquito a poquito, sino que la máquina hace todo. Very good. So that is it. So you will be able to enter the data that you need and the machine is going to do everything. Very good. Very interesting in this video also two things. The way he explains the process, right? You can do this and then you can do this other thing and after that you can do this other thing. So remember that that's what we're checking. And also the vocabulary, right? The vocabulary that is very specific, very specialized for this kind of thing. So for example, caliper. Uh, do you know the word caliper? Very good. And this one very, was very uh, good also because it has a digital uh, screen so you can see everything there very nice and now you know the name of that in english right so it's a very interesting thing perfect so if you want to see the videos uh, they are on the book in the book there are some links for youtube so you can watch it there we're going to continue with the topic of tonight so we're going to start talking about the uses of should okay should is a model a modal verb. You know, we have different kinds of modal verbs like can, could, should, will. And as you may know already, modal verbs, what they do is they transform the verb, right? You should go, you could go, you can go. So it's going to transform the verb depending on what you want to, to express, right? So, uh, let's check about these uh, things. Let's see. Saul Alberto, could you please read this slide? Uh, 
Okay, and show, show can be used. One, to express something that is probable. Example, John shall be here be by by here by two p.m. two and point two and point on two point p.m. PM. two p.m. is fine. He show two p.m. He shall be bright bringing. He shall shall be bringing, bringing Jennifer with him. Bringing. Bringing Jennifer with him. Okay. Perfect. Two. So the number uh, that is okay, fine. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. So number okay. one, the first usage of can is when you express something that is probable, a probability. Okay. So it's like a very easy. You should be here by two p.m. Okay. So the probability is that you you must be here, but we don't know yet, right? Until you come, he should be bringing Jennifer with him. Okay, so it's also a pro probability. So it's very important. Um, what is bring? Bringing. Everybody knows. Creo que es brillar. Creo. Como trayendo. No sé. Atraer. Very good. So, uh, okay. brillar is bright, uh, y este es bring. Okay. Ah, a ver, pero entonces, si Shul es así, hablemos un poco del sentido. Um, he should be bringing Jennifer with him. ¿Qué dice ahí? Como que debería traerla con él. O exactly. Sea, venir con ella. Él debería traer a Jennifer con él. Okay. Él debería. That is should. Ok. So, it's a probability, I mean, debería de venir con ella, a saber si va a venir con ella, but we don't know, okay, it's, it's probable, okay, it's something that might be happening. Good, the other one is to ask questions about this kind of probability. Carla Daniela, could you please read number two? Yes, uh, to ask questions, examples, should we turn left at this street? Shouldn't you be getting ready for work? Okay, so these are like um, like a probability, but in a question, right? So for example, should we turn left at the street? So should we do this or not? It's, I mean, it's like suggestion. What do you believe? What do you think? So instead of saying, what do you think? Do you believe that we can, uh, we should turn? I mean, should is going to be. Is going to be the word for that one. And uh, um, shouldn't you be getting ready for work? That is a negative question. Sometimes it's possible to do negative questions. So um, let's see. Turn left. What is turn left? Anybody? Mira, girar a la izquierda. Very good. So algo así como... Deberíamos girar a la izquierda en esta calle? So it's a question, right? It's what we, what should we do? What do you think is the correct answer? So that will be. It. Shouldn't you be getting ready for work? En esa pregunta que dice. No deberías estar trabajando. Pero... Okay. No deberías estar listando para trabajar like your wife in the morning, right? Shouldn't you be getting ready for work? And you are, no, I'm on vacations. Ah, good. So, <laughs> yeah. So that is the kind of question that we can use with should. Number three, uh, let's see. Uh, Marilyn, could you please read number three? Okay. To show obligation, give recommendation, or even an opinion. Sample. You should stop eating fat food. You should go for walks more often. We should go go to the park tomorrow. You should go to the pharmacy first thing in the morning. Very good, perfect. So, yes, we can use also should for obligation, something that you have to do, okay? Or to give a recommendation or 
an opinion. So any of those are possible with should. So for example, you should stop eating fast food. Not good. That is a recommendation, right? You should stop eating fast food. You should go for walks more often. So that is like also a recommendation, an opinion, right? We should go to the park tomorrow. Uh, that is also like an opinion, a recommendation. He should go to the pharmacy first thing in the morning. That is an obligation, okay? First thing in the morning, he should go to the pharmacy. It's something that he has to do, obligation, okay? So what is fast food? Comida rápida. Comida rápida. Not healthy, but delicious, right? Nice. We should go for walks more often that I believe you know. We should go to the park. We should go to the pharmacy first. First thing in the morning, what is that? La primera hora de la mañana. The first thing. Lo primero que, que va a hacer es debería de ir a la farmacia. So it's like an obligation. Good. Uh, do you have any questions here? I have one. Okay. What's the difference between uh, should and must? Okay, that is a very good question. Must is also an obligation. The difference is that must is more than should. So when you say must is, I mean, you don't have an option. We should is an obligation, but it's a little bit less. Ah, okay. Good. So with must, you don't have a choice. Yeah, with must is like you have to. I mean, if you don't do that one, C -C. I mean, I, yeah, some like that. Good. Okay, thank you. Good, good. Any other question? Good. So, oh, well, that is we should, and we're going to check about the book then. Here is it. Okay, so um, we're going to check about the conversation here. We are still in unit number one. So I will be able to discuss and write about the equipment of my company, okay? And in the number one, it says, uh, let's start. What type of equipment is there at your company? Mm -hmm. Uh, some computers. Computers, very good. Whether, what else? Uh, the fabric code. Okay. Como se decía impresor? A printer. Printer. Okay, very good. Perfect. Thank you. Anybody else's? What type of equipment is there at your company? Nobody else, okay? Uh, do you use it or why? I guess that you use it, right? So, of course. So we're going to check the conversation, the same that we do. I'm going to tell you and you are going to repeat. And then you are going to practice with a partner, okay? So, and then we're going to check, of course, the vocabulary. So it says, uh, Bertha, do you think that our company should improve the manufacturing process? I believe so. Why do you ask? Because if we do so, we reduce costs. I see. I think that we should do what other companies are doing. And that is getting new equipment. I mean, we should not have the same machines with the same programs. We should be in the 21st century. Right. Maybe we should talk about that in the next meeting. Pronunciation questions. 
eh, después en donde dice el último de Berta, we shall be in the century. Ah, ok. 21st century. 21st. Okay. 21st. Any other question? No, I guess. Everything is fine. Okay. So let's practice. Okay. Uh, we are going to start with Roberto and Carla Daniela. Okay. Comienzo yo, comienzo usted. Uh, Roberto, you can you can start. Ah, okay. Berta, do you think uh, that our company should improve the manufacturing process? I believe so. Why do you ask? Because if we do so, we reduce costs. I see. I think that we should do what other companies are doing. And that is? Getting new equipment. I mean, we should not have the same machines with the same programs. We should be in the 21st century. Right. Maybe we should talk about that in the next meeting. Very good. Perfect. Now, uh, Marilyn and Jeanette Angel. Okay. Berta, do you think that a company should improve the manufacturing process? I believe, I believe so. Why do you do ask? Because if we do so, we reduce cost. I see, I think that we should do what other companies are doing. And that is, Get a new equipment. I mean, we should equipment. not get new equipment. I mean, we <laughs> equipment. I mean, we should not have the same machines with the same programs. We should be in the 2021 20, century. 21st. Right, maybe 21st. Uh, right, maybe we should talk about that in the next meeting. Okay, you will repeat. Okay, right. Okay, right. Maybe we should talk about that in the next meeting. Very good, perfect. Thank you. Now, uh, Saul Adalberto and Carlos Humberto. Okay. Berta, do you think that our company should improve the, the manufacturing process? I believe so. Why do you ask? Because if we do so, do so we reduce cost. So, okay. I see. I think that we shall do what other companies are doing. And that is? Getting new equipment. I mean, we shall not have the same machines with the same problem. We shall be in the 21st century. 21st century. Right. Maybe we shall talk about that in the next meeting. Good, perfect. Thank you. Now, Mario Ernesto and Cristina Cerritos. Okay. Okay. Do you think that our show the manufacturing process? I believe in. Billy, and who, why do you ask? 
it comes if if we do so to so we reduce cost. I think I think that this will do what other companies are doing. So I thought. And that is. Okay, we are going to continue with, let me just check. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Okay, very well. Yeah, it seems there was a problem with the connection, as you may know. Okay, so let's continue then with, let's see who's next. Gabriel Esau and uh, Abigail Elizabeth. Hello. Hello. Hello, can you hear me now? Hello? Yeah, Jose. Oh, okay. Hi, teacher. Yeah, you know, here in some Salvador sometimes is a, a problem, the internet connection. So let's see. Uh, the the um, next Bye, one. Is, I'm sorry? Okay, the next one is going to be Gabriel and let's see, Abigail Elizabeth. Hello. Hello. Okay, go ahead, please. Y mi compañero. Es Gabriel. I don't know if it's possible for you, Gabriel. I guess it's not possible for him. Okay, then it's going to be, let me just check. Francisco Acuña. Is it possible for you, Francisco? Creo que mi compañero no se ha conectado. Francisco, can you hear me? Okay, Carla Mendoza then. Okay, teacher. Okay. Okay. Comienzo yo, Marily. Perdón, había ahí. Está bien. Berta, do you think that our company should improve the manufacturing process? I believe so. Why they do? Do you ask? Because if we do so, we reduce cost. I see. I think that we should do what other companies are doing. And that is? Wearing new equipment. I mean, we should not have the same machine with the same programs. 
we should be in the 21st century. Right. Maybe we should talk about that in the next meeting. Okay, perfect. Very good. Thank you. Now, let's see. It's going to be Abel Edenilson and Elia Janira. Hello. Hello, Abel Edenilson. Mm, not possible. Okay, let's then, uh, Gisela, can you please help Elia Janira? Hola, Gisela. I guess it's not possible, he said, okay. Then it's going to be Laura Fuentes. Okay. Okay. Berta, do you think that our company should improve, it? The improve. improve the manufacturing process? I believe so. Why do you ask? Because in we do so, we reduce costs. I see, I think that we so do what other companies are doing. And that is getting new equipment. I mean, we should not have the same machine with the same programs. We should be in the 21st century. Why? Maybe we should talk about that in the next meeting. Very good, perfect, thank you. And now Ivania. And uh, let me just check if uh, Kevin is possible for you, Kevin. Not possible. Ok, como ya pasamos todo, vamos a repetir. A ver, ¿le puede ayudar, please? Carlos Humberto. Ok. Comienzo yo, Carlos. Eh, comienzo usted. Ok. Berta, do you think that your company should improve the manufacturing process? I believe so. What do you do? Because if we do so, we reduce cost. I see. I think that we shall do what other companies are doing. And that is? Getting new equipment. I mean, we shall not have the same machine with the same programs. We shall be in the 21st century. Right. Maybe we should talk about that in the next meeting. Very good, perfect, thank you. Okay, so um, do you have any pronunciation question before we continue? Okay, let's be careful in some words. For example, this one, costs. En esta se tiene que decir la primera S, la T y luego la otra S, costs. That is very important. Okay, and let's see. Equipment. Okay, en inglés se tiene que decir la U, no es como en español que decimos equipo. So it has to be equipment. Uh, I believe those are the most important. Let's check some vocabulary, okay? Uh, what is, let's see. What is the same? Uh, lo mismo. Very good, perfect. Okay, I don't believe there is any other, but do you have any question in the vocabulary? Okay, so now we're going to do the exercise three. How is the manufacturing process in your company? So in your company, do you manufacture things? Creo que las preguntas no están bien, pero porque son las, las que están ahí arriba. 
<risa> Son las que están aquí arriba en la otra. Estas. O oh, no, no estas, sino que las otras. This one. Oh my goodness. No, pero está en una conversación. So, porque aquí dice, uh, tell if it's true or false. Pero ya no pega. So, we're not going to do that. Don't worry. Okay, so, and this is the review of how to use should. Let's see. Um, Mario Ernesto, could you please help me reading the chart? Show, show. Show. It's a more verb to give advice or talk about what we think is right or wrong. It's to prove. Subject plus show plus verb plus something. Continue. Yes, please. We show great our system. We show no continue with the same mark. They show bring new equipment. This company show brought six started. Okay. Very good. Perfect. So again, this is the structure of the um, usage of show, right? So it's a modal verb. And we use it to provide opinion, advice, sometimes obligation, right? And we talk about what we think is right or wrong. And the structure subject plus should or should not, the pronunciation of the contraction is shouldn't, okay? Shouldn't. And the verb, remember that you need a verb in these sentences. And then the complement. For example, we should upgrade our system. They should bring new equipment. We should not continue with the same market. This company should abroad its target. So should is about recommending, providing advice or obligation. Okay. Now we are going to, um, let's check some things here. What is, do you remember what is upgrade? What is upgrade? Is Very good. Uh, bring new equipment. What is bring? Do you remember what is bring? Traer. Traer. Very good. And then the other one says this company should brought. What is brought? <laughs> Ampliar. Very good. So this company should broad its target. Nice. Okay. Um, do you have any question before we continue? Okay. So we're going to do the exercise five. We're going to complete the statement we should or shouldn't, depending on the idea, okay? Uh, I will give you a few minutes for you to complete the exercise. If you have questions, I will be here.
teacher. While they are working on that, can I ask you something? Of course. Okay. Um, what do you do at your other job? Okay. Um, well, in general, what we do in Google here in El Salvador is this. I mean, there are people that they want to implement uh, projects, technology projects. So, for example, if one company, they want to get a server and they want machine learning or intelligence of things, or if they want to analyze a lot of data, uh, and they want to implement kind of project with technology, and they uh, ask us if it's possible to do this kind of thing. So they explain the situation, they explain all the projects, and then we analyze if it's possible to do it. If it's possible, then we connect with somebody in California so they can help uh, with all the rest of the process. And if it's not possible, we let them know so they can go with a partner or other companies or something like that. It's very good. It's very interesting. It's very nice. You know, I really like it. And um, the people are very nice. And uh, the job is very, I mean, it's kind of relaxed. I mean, you need to know a lot of things, but you are not, uh, you are not that stressed. It's, it's very good. I'm glad to hear that. I like my job, but I have to talk with lots of people every day. And como se dice, relacionarme con mis compañeros y tener así un, un ambiente no muy tóxico, pero se aguanta. <laughs> okay, very good. No, no, there in Google we don't have problems. I mean, everybody is very nice. Um, uh, I mean, we, we love, for example, tomorrow we are going to have lunch together. We're going to have some hamburgers. And uh, then in the office, we have uh, a pool table, you know. Tenemos un billar, tenemos futbolito, tenemos... It's very nice. I mean, de repente estamos trabajando, pero estamos jugando y al mismo tiempo hablando de trabajo. So, it's nice. Yeah, it's very good. Partners can talk with me like that. I'm sorry? Because anybody can participate. Anybody wants. Uh, really? I don't know why. Well, uh, uh, we participate in un poquito más. I yeah, sometimes it's difficult. Right? Yeah. Okay, maybe uh, you can apply in the future for Google since you are learning English <laughs> and we can do something together. That would be good. Yeah, I can try it. Can Definitely. Try it Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't want to work in a call center. You don't want that? No. Okay. Pero no común que todos van que a teleperformance y, y por si sí, si, cosas así. Um, sí. No, así no. Lo que pasa es que eh, hay diferentes... Yeah, because... Mira, es diferente. Yo no he trabajado en otros lugares, ¿verdad? Tengo ya siete años de estar en Google. Um, es diferente los call centers. Yo tengo entendido que TP es bien estricto, es bien difícil, uh, es complicado. Igual en Sykes, no sé, pues, lo que me han dicho, nunca he trabajado ahí. Sin embargo, pues, no solo aquí eh, en la cuenta, sino en todo lo que tenemos en Google es... Es diferente, ¿verdad? Incluso, pues, yo ahora le estaba dando training a una persona nueva que acaba de entrar y ella está maravillada, pues, porque es como que salimos a las cinco, por ejemplo, y yo a las cuatro y media, mira, ya terminamos, andate, ¿verdad? Si vos querés. Y, y, y no vamos a terminar a las cinco. Y, y, y o sea, es is different. Entonces, depende de dónde esté uno, ¿verdad? So, I, I know that there are other accounts that are good, uh, depending on, eso es como... Eh, dentro de cualquier empresa a veces hay puestos un poquito mejores o departamentos un poquito mejores que otros. So that happens a lot. Yeah, because when I, I know that some uh, Native Americans uh, make, uh, se comportan como pesados. Se hacen bullying a la gente que quiere ayudarle solo porque no tienen su acento. Dice que pasa. Y, y 
Ah, quizás es lo que le digo, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, nosotros como nosotros hablamos con gente que de negocios, que tiene compañía, es decir, hay proyectos, la semana pasada un compañero hizo un proyecto de 22 millones de dólares, entonces esa gente no, no trata hacia uno, ¿verdad? Esa gente, no importa el acento que tenga, nosotros de hecho tenemos reuniones vía uh, Meet con otras personas en otros países y hablamos, por ejemplo, con los hindúes, los hindúes es bien difícil el inglés de ellos, pero pues nadie los molesta, ¿verdad? Ellos hablan como hablan, entonces. Uh, on the phone of, of my workplace mm -hmm. that uh, was from Afghanistan, I, I guess. Oh, my goodness. So it's difficult. You don't know. Yeah, it's, it's difficult because we all have access. Pero you... <laughs> nice. Yeah, the, the issue is that one that it doesn't matter. I mean, people in the United States, they have accents. So if you are in New York, you have a different accent than if you are in Georgia, for example. People in Georgia, they speak in a very particular way. So that happens all around the world. Yeah, yeah, it's sometimes it's different, yeah, but yeah, you are right, so it's, it's like that. But if you go to other countries, I mean, if you go to Chile or Colombia or Argentina, it's also different, even when they speak Spanish, right? Yeah. It's like they are singing. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's totally different, right? So that happens. Okay, uh, let's check about the exercise, everybody. Number one, how is it going to be? Anybody? Hello, teacher. Hello. Uh, era de ponerle este debería o deberíamos, ¿verdad? Yo no le yeah. comprendí bien que venía ahí. Sí, ahí Debían. está. En la letra A dice complete the statement using should or should not. Okay. En la primera sería our product should be fresh. Very good. Our be, product be should be fresh. Uh -huh. Nice. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. En la segunda should not. Okay. This company. En la tercera we should mm -hmm. Perdón. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. En la tercera, we should explore a new market. We should explore new markets, okay. En la cuarta, the machinery should not be old. Should not be old, very good. En la, en la quinta, all the employees should use the machinery, machinery. Very good. So that is it, very nice. All the employees should. Pero quería ver si había comprendido bien, dicho. gracias. Okay, so it's a pleasure. So, yes, that is it. I mean, it's going to be exactly as Christina said. Nice. Uh, do you have any questions, any pronunciation or vocabulary question in this? No questions. Okay. Um, no teacher. Good. Uh, let me check what else. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, so we're going to do the exercise. En el ejercicio 6 dice que hay que escribir un párrafo. No vamos a escribir un párrafo. Vamos a hacer algo un poco diferente. Y vamos a trabajar en grupos en los break rooms. Eh, lo que vamos a hacer es lo siguiente. Eh, piensen en un proceso, algo que se tiene que hacer. Por ejemplo, cómo evitar el COVID, ¿verdad? Eh, y ahí vamos a hacer como un listado de pasos, lo que deberíamos de hacer, lo que no deberíamos de hacer, afirmativas y, negat y negativas, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, we should use mask, uh, we shouldn't go to, to the stadium, uh, we should wash our hands, uh, y podemos hacer procesos también, vamos a hacer dos cosas en uno, vamos a practicar los procesos, ¿se acuerdan cuando decíamos first do this? Second, do this. After that, do this. Next, do this. Entonces, los dos los vamos a usar en lo mismo. ¿Cómo vamos a usarlo? Vamos a recomendar y luego vamos a escribir un proceso. Por ejemplo, if you go to a restaurant, you should uh, take your distance with other people. You should 
use alcohol hell. Uh, you should be uh, careful about other people that are sneezing, things like that. Entonces, vamos a tratar de usar should y procesos así como deberías o no deberías. Puede ser cualquier tipo de proceso, puede ser un proceso de trabajo, puede ser una receta de cocina. Lo importante es hablar de un proceso. Entonces, en parejas, uh, o a veces puede ser que haya tres ahí, vamos a, a primero ponernos de acuerdo qué proceso es lo que vamos a escribir y luego uno me va a decir las cosas con should y el otro me va a decir las otras como first, second, third, and so on. ¿Ok? ¿Preguntas o dudas con lo que vamos a hacer? La segunda no se la comprendí bien. Ok, son dos cosas, ¿verdad? Primero el uso de should, lo que debería y lo que no debería hacer. Y luego un proceso como primero hay que hacer esto, segundo esto, tercero, cuarto, next, mm -hmm. usando el vocabulario que ya conocemos, ¿verdad? Que es el que está en el libro. First, then, after that, finally, something like that. Ok. ¿Alguna pregunta con lo que vamos a hacer? ¿Alguna otra? Ok, so I'm going to do the breakup rooms right now. Uh, let's see. We are 17. Ok, here we go. Para los que no se han unido, ahí les tiene que salir en la ventanita unirse al breaker room. Le dan join y se unen. Yo le di unirse a teacher, pero no me aparece nadie ahí. A ver, let me check. Pero si está por aquí todavía es porque no se ha unido. Porque si la estoy viendo yo aquí, todavía no está en la reunión. So, allá la están esperando. Quizás esta. no me lo tomó. Fíjese que aquí está, que está uh -huh. enviado, sí. Tiene que buscarlo por ahí, tiene que estar, o no sé, algo sucede, ¿verdad? Pero... Ok. Ok, me avisa si se puede unir. Bueno, si se puede no, unir. No, no, me, no, me, no, me, no me sale la invitación otra vez. La voy si a mover. Si lo reenvía, dicho. Fíjese que no se puede reenviar. No la puede. voy a mover. <ríe> La voy a mover de room, tal vez así le sale. La voy a mover okay. al cuarto. Muchas gracias. Vaya. Ahí le Ahí tiene sí. que estar. Okay.
Proceso para entrar a Zumba, pero... sí. Ya hacemos primero. Para entrar a la, a la reunión. Encender la máquina, abrir la aplicación.
Hello, did you finish? Yes. Nice. Vamos a ir regresando entonces. Let's see here. Hola, ya nos regresaron a la sala. Ah, sí. We are going to check then and let's see uh, how it goes. Vamos a ir en orden. El room number one, we have uh, Jeanette Ángel, Carlos Humberto y Mario Ernesto. Ok, los escuchamos. The microphone is yours. Bueno. Te paso yo. Ok. Ok. Eh, nosotros serían estos. Eh, steps to enter the meeting. Ok. First, first we show log in your, into your account. Okay. Second, find the join meeting icon. Third, we show enter the meeting ID. Mm, fourth, activate the camera and microphone. During the session, we shall not turn off the camera. Fifth, we shall view the camera with good resolution. We should not be in low light. Sixth, uh, we shall be actively involved. Okay, very good, perfect. Anybody else is on the group? Or only that? Okay. Okay, perfect. So now let's go to the group number two. We had Francisco Acuña, Laura Fuentes, and Saúl Adalberto. Um, only Laura, Laura and me. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Si hay personas que no se unieron porque andaban trayendo ahí pupusas. Okay. Um, our list is uh, for a tip for the COVID or for a bit of the COVID. Okay. First, we should keep two meters of social distance. Second, we should disinfect our work area. Third, we should we shouldn't touch our eyes. 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 Uh -huh. Then, then we shouldn't take off the mask. And finally, we we should stay healthy. Okay, very good. And the process? Do you do you have a process or something like that? Only that. Okay, no problem. Thank you. So number three, uh, we had Carla Mendoza and Roberto Emilio. Chan 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 chan. <laughs> okay. 
¿Le oye primero usted, Roberto? Eh, si quiere, de lo, lo, lo primero y yo leo lo otro, lo de lo otro. Ok. Bueno. Good, good. Uh, to hire new staff, we should review the criminal records. We should not requ require many years of experience. We should try, try out new staff before hiring. Ok, good. Okay. Uh, to hire. Uh, we shall first review your resume. Resume, resume, resume. 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 Then verify the data, date, and the conduct, the interview, and finally put the experience to their text. Okay, very good. That was a very nice thing. Thank you. So let's see a room four. It was Cristina Cerritos, Elia Janira, and Carla Daniela. Uh, Janira, no pude tomar la captura. Lo puedo proyectar. Ah, tengo, pero <ríe> no sé si la puede leer. Oh. Okay. Bueno. Bien, vamos a ver. We should wash our hand after going to the bathroom. Uh, second, one should wash your, your hands before a summit. And third, uh, you should wash your hands after touch money. Ok, sí. very good. Tiene Cristi anotó. Sí, yes. Ok. Este, fíjense que voy a mencionar eh, dos eh, que están después de las que mencionó Carla. Ok. Porque dos no, no las alcancé a anotar. Ok. Este, eh, you should was your answer. Touch money. We should not have air or air with dirty hands. Okay, it would do. Okay, very nice. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, on the room number five, uh, there were no people joined. Uh, and the last one, six, we had Gisela Hernandez, Abel Edenilson, Abigail, uh, Elizabeth, and Marilyn Alejandra. Yo solo estaba con Abigail y la otra niña, pues, no sé, creo que solo estaba de oyente. Ok. Ok. Um, voy a leer, yo, nosotros hicimos como, eh, to avoid fines, you should have the documents in order. Mm. Ok. And then you, you should respect the, the signals, for example, the Persian crossing. And you should make correct use of the equipment of your car, for example, the seat belt. Okay. And only that. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. Very nice. It was very good the experience. So, um, como vamos a tiempo y mañana vamos a ir terminando la unidad 1. Ahora nos toca práctica libre. Vamos a echarnos la platicada. So, we are going to do one-on-ones right now, ¿ok? Um, todas las conversaciones van a ser diferentes y a ver ya cómo nos toca. Iniciamos con, okay. eh, let's see, Janet Ángel. Vale, Hello. se escondió. <laughs> Hello, Janet. Hola. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. Very nice. And tell me, Janet, uh, what is your middle name? Yes. 
si no entendemos, me puede decir repeat, please. Y yo le repito. Ah. <risa> repeat, please. Yes, yes. Uh, what is your middle name? Ah. My, um, my name is uh, uh, Mirna. Ah, ok, very ¿verdad? good. Nice, nice. <laughs> 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 And where do you live? Mm, um, I live in Alta Vista. Alta Vista, nice, very good. And uh, where do you work? Um, I work in John Juan El Salvador. Okay, very good, interesting. And uh, do you always commute to your job? Repeat, mm. please. Yes. Uh, do you always commute to your job? What does that mean, teacher? Ah, ok, commute. commute. ¿Alguien sabe qué es commute? Commute. Commute es viajar así largo, ya sea estudiar o trabajar. Ah. Um, ¿Cómo se dice? Um, eh, ¿Viajo hasta eh, Olopuelta? Ah, ok. I uh, go... Or I travel to Olocuilta. I travel, uh, I travel to Olocuilta. Okay. But you eat pupusas there. That's good. <laughs> okay. And uh, what are your hobbies? Mm, my hobbies um, is... Um, Escuchar, uh, listen, music. listen, listen to music, listen to music. Nice. What kind of music do you uh, like? Christian music. Gospel. Mm -hmm. um, um, I like, um, I like um, exercise. To do exercise, good. And do you go to the gym or do you exercise at home? I home. Okay, that's good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, what time do you usually go to bed? Please uh, repeat. Oh, yeah. What time do you usually go to bed? Uh, lo último, no lo entiendo. Go to bed. Uh, go to bed. Mm. Lo último sí no sé la, 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 el significado. Bed. How often? Uh, no. What time do you go sleeping? Mm. Um, I sleep at bed um, in. 10, 10 p.m. At 10 p.m. So you finish the class and you sleep. Literalmente se va a dormir. It's like, okay, good night. Uh, and you sleep. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That is nice. Very good. Perfect. And uh, what time do you usually get up in the morning? Mm. Um, I get at um, um, uh, four. At 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. Ah, that is very early. Good. Perfect. Thank you, Jeanette. Bye bye. <laughs> Gracias, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now let's listen to Francisco Acuña. Hello, Francisco. Hello, Frank. Are you here with us, Francisco Acuña? 
Nos le han dado las pupus, andan en lo oculto. Ok. Let's see then. Uh, Mario Ernesto. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hi. Hi. Nice. And uh, where do you live? I live in La Libertad City. La Libertad, that's nice. And do you work in La Libertad? Yes, I am. That is very good. Nice. And what time do you usually get up in the morning? Uh, 7 a.m. 7 a.m. That's nice. Good. And what time do you usually go to bed? I go to bed at midnight. Uh, I'm sorry? I go to the bed at midnight. At midnight. So in my end, that's very late. Good. And uh, what do you do in your free time? Uh, work. <laughs> More work. Really? You work on Saturdays and Sundays? Yes. In my end. So you don't have any free day? Yes, uh, 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 Saturday and Sunday, pero, but uh, uh, I work on Saturday. Okay, uh, so you, you do other activities? Yes. For work? Uh, for personal work. Ah, okay, so you highlight different activities for you. Okay, good, interesting, nice. Uh, I am, I am computer technician. Oh, yeah. Um, That job is very demanding. A lot of people, right? You help me with this, help me with this. Yes. Very good. And uh, speaking about uh, computers, do you believe that computers now are better than computers in the past? Repeat. Yeah, in your opinion, computers right now are better than computers in the past? Oh, yes. Yeah, right. More efficient, faster. Okay. Uh, like, uh -huh. Es capacidad de almacenamiento. Ah, the storage. Uh -huh. Yes, con más... Uh, yeah, los discos de estado sólido. Ya yeah, son otra cosa. ¿no? They're faster, right? More efficient. Okay. And uh, at night or something like that, don't you watch TV or movies or anything like that? Something. Okay, very good. Perfect, thank you, Mario. Okay. Uh, let's see who else is. Um, Abigail Elizabeth. Hi, teacher. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, teacher, thank you. I'm here very tired, but I'm fine. <laughs> okay, and uh, where do you live? I live in Sonsacate. Sonsacate, very good. Do you work okay. there in Sonsacate? Mm, no. Okay, where do you work? In Sonsacate City Hall. Ah, okay, very good. So, what time do you usually get up in the morning? Mm, past 5 a.m. Okay, that's Good. And uh, what time do you usually go to bed? Past 10. Depends of in the week, in the days or the week. Past 10. Okay. Or right. weekend. 
past night. Okay. Okay, that's good. So you rest a little bit more in the weekends. And uh, do you work on Saturdays? No. Nice. Only Monday, um, Friday. Monday to Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Really good. And what do you usually do in your free time? Mm -hmm. um, usually in the free time, I like play basketball. And oh. also watch TV. Okay, what do you watch on the TV? Repeat, please. What uh, do you watch on the TV? What TV shows do you like? Um, series, ¿cómo se dice? A TV shows. TV shows. Okay. What, for example, right now, what TV shows are you watching on the TV? Um, in this moment, I don't see see TV. Así. Uh, no yeah, I mean. Ah, okay, okay. Uh -huh. So it's whatever no. happens there. Uh -huh. Ahorita estoy en clase. No tengo tiempo. <laughs> ah, no, but ah, I mean. Ah, ya aplicada. <laughs> <laughs> No, el fin de semana no me ha quedado tiempo y prácticamente en ese tiempo porque veía y ahorita que estoy en la clase, pues ni modo. Ya, yeah, no puedo. Estoy en la clase. Yeah. Very good. Sorry. <laughs> ok, very good, perfect. Thank you, Abigail. Ok, teacher. Uh, let's see, Roberto Emilio. Uh, no estoy. No, why not? Um, I sleep. <laughs> okay. So you're Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm very well. And you? I'm bored and tired. Yeah, but today's uh, Thursday. Tomorrow is Friday. So nice, right? Nah, I work Saturday. Oh, that's not good. Do you work Saturday all day? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that is very heavy. But anyways, that's the way it is. Yeah, teacher. And where do you live? I live in San Jacinto, San Salvador. San Jacinto, very good. And yeah. what do you do on Sundays? Um, uh, I usually watch TV or sleep. Mm, sleep is a good idea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And what do you watch on the TV? Uh, TV show. For example? Um, Korean series, TV, um, Korean Dorama. shows. Ah, uh, so, yeah, yeah, Dorama. yeah. I never seen something like that. So, are they good? It's Me like either. uh, good drama. <laughs> uh, it's like a drama, it's like it's like a soap opera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, very good, interesting. And uh, what time do you usually get up in the morning? At 4 a.m. 4 a.m. And what time do you usually go to bed? <laughs> 11. <laughs> 11, yeah. 11 p.m. My goodness, you sleep very, very little. No. <laughs> okay. it's, no good. it's no good. Yeah, it's not good, but that is up to you, of course. Yeah. Okay, very good. Perfect. Thank you, Roberto. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. Uh, a ver, un voluntario para la próxima. Nobody. Uh, no, of course, you can do it. Yeah, you don't talk too much. Okay, let's see. So, Carla Daniela. Never is enough. <laughs> no, that's, that's not a problem. Okay, hello. Hello, teacher. 
How are you? How is it going? I'm very well, very tired, but I'm very well. Yeah, you look tired. Really? <laughs> yeah, I think everyone is same. Yeah, you know, it's Thursday and well, anyways, but uh, we almost finished the week, so that is good. Yeah. Good. And uh, where do you live? I live in San Marcos. San Marcos, good. And do you work there in San Marcos? Not really. I work uh, near the Paseo General Escalón in Almacén Pacifico. Ah, okay, very good. So, and yeah. what time do you usually get up in the morning? Honestly, I was waking up at, at five, maybe, but... Uh, few days ago because traffic I have to get up at at 4 a.m. at 4 a.m. yeah that is very early and what time yeah. do you start your work <laughs> 8 30 a.m. in my and that is a lot of yeah time because you're... traffic is horrible it's terrible yeah. if you don't uh, get up early you don't arrive at, at work on time. That yeah, is it's true. impossible. Yeah, you know, I, I live, well, I, I am from Santana, but I live right now. In car, I take it takes five minutes. In bus, I it takes 10 minutes for me to go to the work. But once this week, I was 40 minutes in the traffic. Really? <laughs> My God. That was too much, but that's the way it is. I mean, what yeah, can we patient do? is gone? <laughs> yes, I mean, you are worried because you are very responsible, right? You say, Oh my yeah. goodness, I will be late, but you can do anything, I mean, not possible. Yeah, okay, I feel you. <laughs> and uh, what time do you usually go to bed? Mm, I usually go to bed at 10. 10 30 p.m. maybe 10 30. it yeah. depends because uh, if i I'm, I'm cooking during the class i try to go to bed early so uh, but okay. if i can't do it i have to go to bed um, maybe at 11 p.m ah, okay okay yeah, yeah that because is... i have to help my mother Ah, okay, very good. So, um, so who do you live with? With your mother? Yeah, with my mother, my brother, and my boyfriend. Ah, okay, very good. So four is nice. It's kind of good. And uh, what do you usually do on your free time? Hmm, I like do something. Uh... Sometimes I wanna read, and sometimes I play video games. When I play games on my phone, like Minecraft, <laughs> like I said that day, and um, I think that's all because I'm fat, so I don't play football anymore. <laughs> Ah, but I mean, you can play. That's not a problem. So whenever you want. Yeah, so. but I feel happy. Really? Yeah. Who, who <laughs> Me canso pupusas? rapidísimo. <laughs> yeah, lots of pupusas, burritos, tacos. Nice. That's my diet. That's good. That's good. <laughs> okay, very good. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Carla. No puedo mentir. <laughs> okay, no. you're welcome, teacher. It's a <laughs> pleasure. It was a pleasure. Good. Let's see Kevin Ramiro. Not here. Uh, Cristina Cerritos. No, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello, teacher. How are you? Um, good. Nice. And uh, where do you live? Um, San G Metropolis San Gabriel, um, in Calle Quesal. 
Ah, okay, very good. And uh, do you work there near Quesalpe? Um, no, uh, antes de llegar a Mexicanos, Colonia mm. La Rabida. Ah, in English? Uh, <laughs> antes, after, teacher. After... Before. Before, perdón. Before Colonia La Rabida. Okay, very good. What time do you usually get up in the morning? Um, ¿A qué hora me levanto en la mañana? Ajá. Um, para decir a veces, teacher, en inglés. Sometimes. Sometimes four, sometimes six, sometimes five. Um, cuando hay un poco más de, de tiempo. Es, ¿Cómo se dice, teacher? Es cuando hay más tiempo. When I have more time, you can say. When I have more time, um, six, pero eh, por lo general, a la four, four. Okay, yeah. So you can say four. in general at four. General at four. Okay. What time do you usually go to bed? For bed. Esa palabra no mucho me la sé, teacher. Go to bed. Bed. What time do you usually go to bed? Mm. To bed. No, What time do you usually sleep? Um, Bye -bye. Bye. Sí, le, yo le aconsejo que está bien que trate de entender lo que decimos, pero no de traducir. Um, sé que es difícil, ¿verdad? Porque es un proceso. Pero poco a poco tenemos que ir dejando de traducir. Tengo que practicar más. Exacto. Sí. Por eso lo estamos haciendo sí. ahorita. ¿verdad? Esta es sí. práctica. Hay que sí, sí, sí. Entonces, sí. si yo le digo, what time do you usually go to sleep? Sleep. Mm. Sleep. 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 Mm -hmm. Nada sin dicho. No duerme nada. <risa> este. Das típico. Eh, ya, ya, dicho. Este. Eh, um, si no tengo mucho sueño, me quedo viendo algo, algo, algo este, practicando un poquito de inglés y, y este, ver alguna película. Y si, ah. me estoy muriendo, y si me estoy muriendo del sueño, a las 10 ya voy para la cama. Ah, Pero no se lo dije en inglés, eso. no me jala las orejas. No, no, no. Mira, lo que pasa es que pues, para eso estamos para practicar, ¿verdad? En que sea de a poquito, vamos, vamos viendo. Ahora, trate de decirlo en inglés, a ver, a ver, ya cómo. Yo le voy a ayudando, aquí no está sola. Yes, este, um, um, general thing, o sea, por lo general a 10. In general sí. a 10, ok. General a 10, sí. sí. Yes. Hay todo lo demás que me dijo. Me dijo el Señor Jesús. Este. <risa> um, Uh, si no tengo sueño, o sea, si, yes, um, yes, um, si no tengo sueño, o sea, es, esa partecita no sé cómo se dice en inglés. Va, puede decir, if I don't feel asleep. If, if I don't, no, yes. If I, um, no, asleep, asleep, no, asleep. If I don't feel asleep. Mm -hmm. If I don't a sleep. Uh -huh. Voy a practicar, teacher, porque sí, yo sé que necesito practicar. Que aquí estamos practicando, no se preocupe. Entonces. Ah, perdón, perdón, más, <risa> más, más. Ok. Sí, sí, no, no hay problema. Eh, sí es importante que, que vayamos dando el paso. Yo sé que a veces sí. eh, um, cuesta, ¿verdad? Porque queremos decir tantas cosas y no nos salen. Entonces, es parte del proceso. Pero vamos a estar haciendo estas prácticas, o sea. Sí. Para esto, Mejor. 
Pa, sí, total. sí, mejor así, mejor Igual, así que nos equivoquemos, pero así vamos a ir aprendiendo. Exacto, no importa sí, si se sí. equivocan, compañeros, aquí hasta yo me equivoco y los gringos, yo he escuchado a gente que no habla, solo habla inglés y se equivocan también, ¿verdad? So, that happens, eso pasa. Entonces, um, yes. vamos a estar haciendo algunas prácticas así que de repente nos quedamos hablando un rato con todo, ¿verdad? A veces van sí, a ser sí. temas generales, como que, qué película les gusta y todos empiezan a hablar. Y a veces van sí. a ser como así, uno por uno, vamos a ir platicando. Entonces, sí. eh, y sé que de repente hay palabras que decimos eso, no sé cómo decirlo. Pero ahí me pregunta, ¿verdad? Miri, ¿esto cómo se dice? Yo sí. le digo, ya, yeah, lo dice, ¿verdad? So, ahí no me sí. Thank you. You're welcome. Y como okay. dice, muchas, muchas gracias, teacher. Thank you very much. Mucha. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Okay, okay, very much. okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Exactly. Pero fíjese very... que por lo general, por lo general, así lo dice mucha gente, very much. Lo que y, pasa es que y, se, se escribe, acaba ¿verdad? Ajá. Que es lo correcto, very much. Ajá. Y very mucha much. gente así lo pronuncia. Ajá. Very much. Okay. Okay. Thank Perfect. you very much. All right. Okay, my friends, this was the class of tonight. Do you have any questions? No questions. Okay, so let's check the attendance and then you're free to go. A ver, Edenilson Salazar Melara. Present teacher. Abigail Elizabeth Present. Flores Hernández. Present teacher. Good. Carlos Humberto Estrada Escobar. Elias Janira Canizale Blanco. Present teacher. Good. Francisco Ernesto Acuña Rivera. Gabriel Esaú Melara Rosales. Isela Beatriz Hernández Morales. Joana Saraí Maldonado González. Carla Daniela Molina Cruz. Present. Good. Carla Ivania Anaya Ancheta. Present teacher. Good. Carla Lorena Mendoza Guevara. Here teacher. Good. Kevin Ramiro Vázquez Pineda. Laura Guadalupe Fuentes de Meléndez. Present. Good. Marilyn Alejandra Grande Pérez. Present. Good. Mario Ernesto Ramírez López. Present. Good. Mirna Janet Ángel de Castro. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Emilio González Cruz. Present teacher. Good. Santos Cristina Cerritos de Ruiz. Present teacher. Good. Saúl yeah. Adalberto Cornejo Valdés. Present. Good. And Jocelyn Stephanie Roldán Castaneda. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. 101 de ahora es para Elia Yanira. Uh, and for the rest of the class, see you tomorrow. Have a good night and dream in English. Good night, teacher. Good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, teacher. Thank good you night. very much. Bye. Good night, everybody. Good night. Hello, Janira. Hello. How are you? Um, fine. Okay. Bueno, eh, me imagino que ya tiene experiencia en los one on ones, ¿verdad? Mm, sí. Yes. Okay, good. Entonces, eh, bueno, la primera pregunta que a mí me gusta hacerle a toda la gente acá, ¿verdad? Es, ¿Cómo siente que va? ¿Siente que va avanzando? ¿Que, que a, todo está bien? ¿Que va aprendiendo? Mm, bueno, creo que como interrumpimos casi un mes y medio de, de la clase, este, y bueno, quizás por no tener la disciplina de, de practicarlo, porque sí escucho música en inglés y algunas cosas, pero sí siento que hay unas cosas que me cuestan, ¿verdad? Y, y quizás eso siento que como me detuvo un poco, pero 
eh, al final hoy que, hoy que entré ya, bueno, no, no, no entré el día lunes, sino que del martes en adelante. Y no, pensé que nos venimos perdidos, pero no, siento que sí voy avanzando un poco. Perfecto. Sí, es un proceso, ¿verdad? Es un proceso en el que poco a poco vamos agarrando vocabulario, confianza y vamos hablando un poco más. Sí, por ejemplo, hoy que estaba haciendo la, los diálogos con los compañeros, bueno, algunas cosas las iba anotando porque hay unas cosas que igual de igual manera no sabía que le estaba preguntando. No, oh, perfecto, eso se trata, de aprovechar, eh, de aprovechar aún cuando no es uno el que habla, sino que todos los demás, ¿verdad? Ver un video y agarrar palabras o eh, cabal cuando uno pregunta o alguien le contesta, ¿verdad? Eh, poco a poco, ¿verdad? Es de ir practicando y de aprovechar ahora que tenemos las clases de, de en verdad practicar. Sí. Good. Uh, ¿Y tiene alguna pregunta, alguna duda en cuanto a las clases de este módulo o de otros módulos? Mm, no, este, ya entre la plataforma, eh, de igual manera, ahí están ya subidas las actividades, creo que algunas las estuvo eh, pasando usted hoy, ¿verdad? No okay. las he hecho todavía, pero sí, este, ya, ya estuve ahí en la plataforma, revisando algunas. Perfecto. No, no sí. tengo duda. Le aconsejo entonces que se ponga el día porque yo los sábados envío las notas a Insaforto. Entonces, ah, okay. el sábado en la mañana a las 7 me levanto eso y ya tiene Sería que la actividad 1, ¿verdad? La tarea 1, tarea 2, tarea 3, tarea 4 y ah, tarea 5. Ah, ok. Perfecto. Perfecto. Ok. ¿Alguna duda, alguna pregunta que usted tenga que necesite ayuda? Mm. No, realmente creo que como usted dice, un proceso y que sí, hay cosas que tal vez uno puede tener dudas en el momento de un tema, ¿verdad? Pero, eh, por ejemplo, ahorita estuvimos viendo el... Estuvimos viendo ayer... A ver, el imperativo, ¿verdad? Ajá. Este, en ese caso usted decía que ese no llevaba um, eh, como como el sujeto, algo así. Exacto, el sujeto, Ajá. o sea, no lleva el sujeto. Ajá. Que era como, yo lo comprendí como, digamos, eh, algo directo. Ajá. Por ejemplo, en algún, algo que estuve leyendo ahí también este, en, en internet, que decía de que como que no llevaba eh, una estructura, sino que directamente le decía a la persona tal cosa, ¿verdad? Haz esto. Exacto, igual que en español, cuando usted le dice Ajá. a alguien, haz esto o no hagas esto, ¿verdad? Entonces, Ajá. igual, y solo que en inglés casi todas los, las oraciones llevan sujeto. Este es el único que no lleva, ¿verdad? O sea, Ajá. no dice he o she, sino que dice solo do this o don't Ajá. do this. Ajá. Sí, comprendo. Este, en el caso del, del que estuvimos viendo hoy, el chul y el, y el otro era el, no me acuerdo. Este, ese, eh, ¿en qué momento voy a ocupar uno y en qué momento voy a ocupar el otro? Eh, Shul es el único que vimos ahora y lo ah. va a utilizar cuando recomienda algo o cuando dice un advice, un consejo, ¿verdad? Como en español, eh, ese es como debería. Entonces, uh -huh. usted debería de estudiar, usted debería de uh -huh. eh, cuidarse. Como de algo mandatorio. Derechos. Puede ser una recomendación, ¿verdad? Deberías uh -huh. hacer esto. O puede ser algo obligatorio también. Deberías haber venido más temprano. Entonces, de las dos maneras. Mm, okay. Creo que es. Ok, very good. Mm -hmm. So, it was a pleasure to be with you. See you tomorrow and have a good night. Good night. Bye-bye.